Hello everyone, nice to meet you again. This is Professor Bajigny. This is lecture number three. In this video, I will cover chapter, uh, chapter three. The topic of chapter three is power and energy. So what is energy and what is power? Energy is the ability to do work while power is the rate of expanding energy. So let me elaborate more on the definition of energy. The definition of energy or the term energy, it's a broad. It covers many types of energy, such as the wind energy, the water flow energy, the heat energy that we get from the sun or from the fire or from the wood the light energy that we get it from the sun or from the light. So all these energies are type of energy. Now, if we go to the beginning to explain how things go, for example, we started with the atom and we said the atom constitute or perform the element that element, it has a substance. That substance is made of billions and billions of atoms. Now, if we take that sub a substance and give it a name, we give it a name as, as a mass. So mass is the actual substance of the matter or of the element or of the material. Now, if we take that mass, and we use with it a gravity. So we come up with something called weight or force. So weight or force is equal mass times the gravity or times the G. Now, if we look again, so we said W or force equal to the mass times the gravity G. So that's, that's an energy. So mass is an energy, weight or force is an energy. Now, if we try to lift up a certain weight, such as a 10 pound, as it shows in this example here, so that lift up that pound, that weight, one foot above the ground, we call the action as a work. So what is a work? A work is a force applied over a distance. It expressed in units such as foot, pounds, or inch, pound. So as we see here, it's very clear that keeping adding a new term give us a new definition of an energy. So we start with the mass, we multiply it by the gravity, we get something called force, and it, this is a type of energy. Now, if we take that weight or that force, lift it up above the ground, one foot, that is called work. The mathematical expression for work is equal, work equals, F times D, which is foot pounds, is the units of the work. So F is the force or weight measured in pound. D is the distance measured in feet. Note, there is a reference for time. It may take five or 10 minutes to move or to lift the 10 pound, the one foot in the previous example. So as we notice that when we lift that 10 pound above the ground, we don't count the time, how much time it takes to lift that 10 pound above the ground one foot. Does it take five minutes or 10 minutes or one hour? Now, if we do include the time when we made the work, when we lift the 10 pound one foot above the ground, if we include the time, then the new energy will become power. So what is power? Power is the amount of work done based on time period, such as seconds or minutes 
or power is the time rate of doing work. So how much time it takes me to lift up a certain uh, weight or a certain uh, force. As an example, if we look to the example we have here, we see that the, uh, we have a 10 pound and the 10 pound is, uh, in the last example, we're lifted one foot in one and a half a second. So if we apply the formula for the power, which is work equals, uh, sorry, power equals work over time or force times distance over time. P equal F, D divided by time. So we have the, we have given the, uh, the, the, the work, which is again, it's a work here. So the work is 10 pound, okay, times one, which is the distance one foot. So work is, is 10, 10 pound uh, foot. And then we had the time divided by the time, so 10, divide by one half, which is the time, that's give us a 20, okay? So the 20 is the, uh, is the, uh, the result of dividing work over time, foot, pounds, okay? Now, uh, again, we have some kind of another definition for the power or another units, in fact. And so instead, you know, because there's two units of power, either we use watts or a horsepower. So horsepower is used for uh, stating a machine power, such as motors or the machine of, or the engine of the car. We don't give the units watts for the power produced by a machine, but we just define it as a horsepower. And later on, we'll define the equivalent between the watts and the horsepower. So later on, we'll see the, uh, the, wave, uh, the, the formula that, or the number represents one horsepower. But in physics here, we have the electrical machines such as motors are rated in horsepower. So one horsepower is equivalent to 550 foot pound per second. So that means what happened long time ago, they took a, a weight and they touched that, they, they attached that weight uh, to a horse. And they, 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 they asked the horse to lift up that amount of the, uh, the weight. So they keep adding the weight and then asking the horse to lift up the horse. So the horse wa wa was able to lift 550 pound in one second, one foot above the ground. So that's how they determine the equivalent horsepower to, to how many pounds lift uh, uh, one foot above the ground. Okay, now we go and we talk about the power in electrical circuit. Now we know in power, we don't have pounds we don't have distance, we only have current and the voltage. So power in, in, uh, in electrical circuit is equal to V times I. So this is the formula that we will use uh, to determine the power. And later on, I will show you how to determine the other two formula of the power using uh, uh, Ohm's law. So in electricity, the unit of power is the Watt, uh, or W, was named in honor of James Watt, who is credited with the invention of steam engine power in an electrical uh, circuit can be written in terms of voltage and current. So, in, so power in electrical circuit can be written in terms of voltage and current. The power formula is uh, P, is equal to uh, V, which is the units of V is volts times I, and the units of the I is the ampere. And I remind you again with the ampere is the number of the electrons moving per second, which is equivalent to 6.24 multiplied by 
10 to the power 18 electrons per second. So this is the definition of one ampere. So power formula sometimes called Watt's law. So Watt's law is another name for the power form. If two quantities are known, the third unknown can be found. So for example, if we are given I and V, then we'll be able to determine the power uh, P. If we are given P and V, then we'll be able to find I. And if we are given P and I, we'll be able to find uh, uh, V. So again, going back to the general formula of the power, P is equal V times I. And if we are given, as I said, V and I, we'll be able to find uh, P. If we are given uh, V and, and P, we are able to determine uh, uh, the I, uh, and so on for the third unknown. Here's the memory device that might help uh, you to uh, remember the power formula. So if we look to P here, which is, and we look down here in this uh, square, uh, I or, uh, and here in this square, we look to E or V. Now, just imagine that this line, the, uh, the horizontal line, it represents a division and the vertical line represents the multiplication. Now, if we uh, want to find the P, for example, if we cover P by our fingers or hand, then P is equal to I, P equals to I, P equals to I times V. Okay, if I cover P, if I'm looking for P, I cover P and then I determine the, uh, uh, the formula for the P is I times E. Now, if I want to find I, I will cover I, I will cover I, okay? And then I write the formula, I equal P divided by V or E. Again, same thing I can use to find uh, the, the E. So if you wanna find E, I will be able to cover E or V and then apply the formula P over I. Okay, so again, this is a, a memory device that might simplify you to understand how to find the three unknowns if we are given two unknowns. Okay, if you look to this example here, uh, a circuit with unknown a load, again, we define the load. A load is the element that consumes an electrical energy. So if there is any element connected to a circuit or to the power supply, and that element produce type of another energy, which means an element that converts an electrical energy into another form of energy. For example, if I connect a light bulb to a voltage supply, so the light bulb will convert the electrical energy I and V into a light. So that light bulb, light bulb is called a load. Okay. Same thing. If I connect a power supply to a heater, the heater will convert the power, which is I times V, into type of another energy, and in in terms of uh, in form of heat. So I times V will become a heat and so on whatever the load that we connected to the power supply will convert that energy or that electrical energy into a type of uh, another energy now here we are uh, uh, asking to find the resistance okay we are asking to find has an okay a circuit with unknown load so the resistance unknown has an applied voltage 100 volt, so V is 100, so V is given, okay, this is given also, so V is equal to 
uh, 100 volts. So always, guys, when you try to solve a problem, always read the problem and write down the information. This will be a very good technique to use to solve for the unknown. The measured current is two amps. So now we are given I, I is equal to two amps. Okay, how much power is consumed? So again, even though that the load or the resistance of the load is not given, but still we are able, we are able to determine uh, the power dissipated by that resistance. So P equals to I times V. Now I is two and V is 100, so it will be 200 watts. So how much energy will be consumed or absorbed by the resistance? It will be 200 watts. That amount of watts will be converted into a form of another energy, which is a heat. So usually a resistance will convert an electrical energy into a heat. Okay, another example here, we say a circuit with a known load has an applied voltage. Okay, we already uh, probably am repeating this one. So just skip the example one because we already covered it. Now, uh, example two, an electrical toaster. Okay, we have electrical toaster, which the one that we use to uh, heat up our uh, uh, bread or bagel. Uh, that toaster is connected to 117 volt, okay? And then the, the toaster consumes 550 watts. So we need to find how much current that this, to this toaster will draw from the power supply. Again, we need to go back to the formula of the power and it's here, written here, okay? So we need to find I so we have P equals to P equals to I times V. Now I'm looking for I, so if I divide both sides by V to cancel out the V and I get I. So now I is equal P over V. Now P is five, 550 and voltage is 117. So this is how much current will flow through the uh, to the toaster. Now, sometimes the uh, we use, or not all, all actually, in, in fact, we use the current to design the wire, the wire that we need to connect to the toaster. Okay, so so we need to know how much current flow in that wire, and then accordingly we can design how what is the size of the wire that will be able to handle uh, the current that flow in that uh, machine or in that device. Okay, in example number three, we are having a microwave is rated at a thousand watts. So again, rated mean this is the maximum power that this microwave or this element can give and draws an electrical current. So now we have two given value. We have the power P and we have the current I. Now, how much voltage source will this appliance uh, connected to? So we need to know what is the size of the power supply we can connect to that device in order to deliver to us a thousand watts. So again, uh, going back to the formula of the power, I need the voltage, so I divide the both sides by the current because I need the voltage in one side and they move, I need to move the current on the other side. So I divide both sides by I, and then we cancel I, then we uh, end up having V equal P over I. Okay, so this is the formula that we will use. So again, I don't want you to memorize the three formulas, just memorize one of them and use the algebra to determine the, uh, the, the other two unknowns. So here's the, uh, we substitute for P is a thousand, and for the I is eight, and this is the size of the voltage supply. Okay, so we need how much voltage we need in order to get 1000 watt? We need 125 volt. 
Okay, Ohm's law and the uh, uh, what? Now, as, as I mentioned earlier, the formula for the power is uh, P is equal IV. Now, if I use Ohm's law with the power law, I will be able to find another two formula in terms, one of them in terms of I square and R, and the second one in terms of V square over R. So this is our original formula here. P equal I times V. Now, if I want to find the second formula here, let's say this is the first formula, this is the second one, and this is the third one, okay? So if I need to find the second one from the first one and from Ohm's law, okay? And this is my Ohm's law, okay? And then from Ohm's law, I will be able to find I if I divide both sides of Ohm's law here, uh, we can get uh, uh, I. So I here will be V over R and then R and then also if I need to find V uh, uh, R, it will be V over R. Now, coming back again to how to prove the second formula, how to get the second formula from the first one and from Ohm's law. Now, as, as you see here, P is equal I times V. In the second formula, I need to keep the I in the first one, I need to keep I, but I need to substitute for the V. Now, if I go, using the Ohm's law here, here in this formula. So P equals I multiplied by V. So I'm going to keep the I and I'm going to substitute for the V. So V is equal what? V is equal I times R. So I times I is I squared times R. So this is my second form of the power. Okay, so again, it's very simple. First, we need to use the power formula. Second, we need to substitute uh, 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 either uh, substitute for, uh, for V or for I in using Ohm's law. Now, to find the third formula, the third formula of the power, what we need to do, again, we need to use the power formula, P equal I times V. Now, in the third formula, I need to keep the V, okay? So I will keep V and I'm going to substitute I from Ohm's law, which is this one here. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down here and plug it here. So V divided by R. So that one, V times V is V squared over R. And this is my third formula of the power. Okay, so power equals to V square over R, which is, so these are the three formula of the power. As I mentioned, you could memorize these three formula or you could memorize this formula and the Ohm's law, and then you can drive the second and the third using the uh, power formula and Ohm's law. Okay, <clears throat> so far uh, we are covering the uh, power formula, the three power formula that we will use uh, extensively uh, later on. And again, it's not that difficult to uh, use that formula. The only thing you just you need to just uh, figure out what are the information uh, that are given. This is very important in your uh, technique of how to solve the problem. So always read the problem and then write down the formulas of the power and the formula of the Ohm's law, have them ready uh, to you, and then plug and then pick the right one, which one is more suitable to solve. So let's see example one. In the following figure shown below, drawn below, we are given the voltage here, okay? We are given V, so V is equal 60. And we are given R. Okay, find the current I and P. Okay, so what do we need? We need the help of Ohm's law. So V is equal I times R. Okay, so we need to find I. So I will be V over R. 
So it will be 60 over 15. And this is the answer. Okay. Very straightforward. Okay, now we need to find power. Okay, before I go to, you know, to figure out what is the power, let me write down the three formula for the power and then see which one is more suitable to use. So the first one is P I times V. Second one, P equal I square R. Okay, even though it's easy to remember. So one, one of them in terms of IV, the other one in terms of I square R, and the third one in terms of V square divided by R. Okay, so these are the three formula we might use but maybe there is one of them we can use straightforward. So we are given V and R. So then if we look through the third one, so the third formula is the best one because we don't need to uh, figure out what is I. Here we are not given I unless we need to find it. So if I, if I don't ask to determine I and just ask to find P, then there's no need to find I. I just go to the third formula P, which is this one here, and plug for voltage is 60, squared divided by 15 is 200. Or we could use the formula of P is equal I times V, since we already determined uh, I, so it would be four times 60. Or I could add, we could use the third one, which is I squared, over R since I have I, so it will be uh, I squared, so it will be, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, this is not the right one. So it will be I squared times R. So I is four squared multiplied by R, which is a 15. So this will give us the same answer as the previous two answers, okay? So again, you have different way of two determine the, the, the power. Okay, and here's the, uh, uh, the second example. We need to find the, let me just erase this stuff here. Uh, we need to find the voltage E of V as uh, probably as a, I'm not sure if I mentioned this area or not, but some books they use uh, the symbol to, uh, uh, for, uh, for voltage for the power supply E and they use V for the units. Some books they use the uh, symbol for a voltage supply V and the units V. So, so again here I'm using both of them in case you read another book that uses E. So E using E on V is the same. Okay, so here uh, as I said to solve the problems I should uh, uh, put the Ohm's law. Again, I'm going to rewrite Ohm's law. V is equal I times times R. And then P is equal I times V. Second formula for the P I squared. I squared times R. And the third formula will be V squared over R. Okay, good. So, so what do we have here? We are find the voltage V. So I need V and R. Okay, and what's given? Well, it's given P. What is given? I. Okay. Now let's see. Here. I need V. Okay. V is equal I times R. Okay. That's not a good one because I, I have an I, yes, but I don't know V. And I don't know, I, sorry, I don't know R. So then this, uh, this formula is not suitable to be used. Then let's come down here. I have P is equal I times V. Okay, and do I have P? Yes, I do have P, good. Do I have uh, I? Yes. Okay, now we can find V. Okay, so let's see how to find uh, uh, V. So P is equal to uh, I times V. So V equal P over R. So I have P is 50 and I have I is five. So this will be 10 volt, good. Now, since, you know, so this is R, uh, so the voltage is 10 volt, as it says here, that's good. Now I need to find R. So again, uh, go to, uh, since now we have V, we have I, now we are able to find R. So R, using Ohm's law, R will be V over I. 
So V is 10 and I is equal to, again, is 5. So it will be 2 ohm. Okay. Now you could use also the uh, this formula here to find R. I'll show you how. Let me remove this stuff here to have more uh, uh, space. And then I'll show you how to determine the resistance R without finding the voltage. So if we go write down this formula here, so I square times R. So to find R, we divide both sides by I square, I square, I square, uh, uh, sorry, I square here. So R would be equal to P over I square. Now P is 50 and I is 5 squared, 25, so this will be 2 up. Okay, so the same answer as this one. Okay, so this is again, uh, uh, this is uh, another example to, you know, as, you know, always I encourage my students to, uh, to do more exercise, to do more problems, to comprehend and to master the material. It's not enough to do one or two or three examples. You could find examples, you know, in in the internet. You could find examples and working problems in in in, in books. So the more practice you do, the better you understand the material and you comprehend it here. So uh, if we uh, go back to uh, uh, Okay, in this third example, we need to determine the power in each of the circuits shown in figure three, two. So again, first step we do, write down the formulas for Ohm's law. Okay. The reason I'm asking you to do that because the more you write the formula, the more you get it easy to understand and to memorize it. Power formula, I times V, second one, I square R, third one, V square over R. So this is the first step we should do. Write down the Ohm's law, the three formula of the power. Then the second one is to read the problem and look, what do we have? We have the voltage, okay, this V. What else here is I. Okay, again, always I ask the students to know the units of every component of the circuit of every quantity of the circuit. We have power, has a unit watts or W. We have voltage supply, has a unit of the volt. And we have the current flow, that has a unit of ampere. So for example, in this case, this, in this circuit here, it doesn't tell, tell us this is a current, but, and doesn't give us also the symbol I. Same thing in here, only give us 12 volt because the units, so that means this is a volt. And this is at. Now, second one here, again, this is, we given the voltage V and we given the resistance here. So again, for the first figure, or figure 3.2, we have V and I, okay? What is asked to find the power? Okay, good. So we have V and I, so this is the formula that you, this is a suitable one, okay? Now again, you could, you could use, you know, uh, the other formula. If you if you find R using Ohm's law, because you have V and I, you will be able also to use the second formula. And also you'll be able to use the third formula. So again, but using the first formula when it is faster, this will take you less time than if you use the second one. Because if you use the second one, I squared R, if you use this one here, that one require you to apply Ohm's law first to find an R and then plug it here. So again, as I said, best way, write down the three formula of the power, Ohm's law, and see which one, which formula give you directly the answer. If there's no one, just pick any one, it's, uh, it's more suitable. Okay, so again, uh, we have an I and V, so here's the uh, solution. 
P is equal to VI or IV, 12 times T36 form. Okay, now for this circuit here, we have the voltage and we have the resistance. Okay, and which one is suitable is this one. Okay, this is the one we can use. So P is equal to V square over R. So it will be 100 square over A. So this is the how much power will be consumed by that. So if you notice here, this is like 8 ohm. It's a very small value, but that resistance can handle 1,250 watts. And if you remember, when we buy a resistor, always we rate the resistance by two things, or we size it, by the value of the resistance and by watts. How, how much power that this resistance can handle before it goes to overheat. If it goes to overheat, it might get burned and it might get uh, uh, damaged. Okay, so let's see how to solve this uh, practice problem here. So let me see if I can keep the formulas so I don't want to rewrite this one more time. Let's remove all this stuff here. Okay, so so what do we have here? Again, steps as usual, Ohm's law, power formulas, the three of them. And then we look to what we are given. For this circuit here, circuit A, we are given I and we're given the voltage, same as the previous one. So then the power P will be equal uh, I, which is four times uh, 10. 4 times 10, or P equal 4 times 10 is equal to 40 uh, watts. This is the answer here, 40 watts. Very good. Let's, let's check the, uh, the second one. Second one we are given, so as you see here, this is very similar to just to the example, the previous example we just did. Okay, we have, we have the voltage V, we have the resistance R, okay? So power, again, we use V squared over R. Can we use I squared times R? Yes, we can. I will show you how. Let's finish this. So V squared will be 20 squared over R, which will be 50. So it will be 400 over 50. So this will be eight watts. Okay, let's show, show you how to use the other formula, but we cannot use it by itself. We have to use Ohm's law first, and then we use. So the second formula or the third one, we have P equals to, P equal to uh, I squared times R or V squared over R. Uh, sorry, we already did this one. Or I times M. I meant this, the, the second one, the, the other formula. P equal to V times I. So the reason that at the beginning we, could, we couldn't use this two here because we don't know I. But if we use Ohm, uh, Ohm's law so uh, to find I, so I equal to V over R, now V is 20 and R is 50. So this is will be uh, two over five. Okay, so this is will be I. Now we can now plug for I. Uh, P is equal to you know, V, which is 60. That's uh, sorry, 20. Looking for the second one. 20 times, uh, 20 times 2 over 5, okay, which is 8, the same as the previous or the, uh, the answer, okay. And again, we could use the I square uh, times R. We have an I is 2 over 5, E square multiplied by I with the same answer as the previous answer here. Okay? Let's move on to uh, 
example uh, 3.4 and then we do the practice problem 3.4. In the example 3.4, find the maximum allowable current that can flow through the six kilo ohm four watt resistor. So again here we are given the ohm and how much power that resistance can handle. Okay, so we need to see what is the maximum current that we can apply so the power dissipated by the resistance cannot exceed the four watts because if it does it will overheat the, the, the resistor and it might burn out okay? so we need to be sure that the resistance won't be overheated so again uh, writing down all the formula i mentioned ohm's law v equal i times v p equal i square r p equal v square over r okay now we have so we have the power we have the power that we uh, we uh, and we have the resistance so we have the power four so four watts we have power four watts uh, and we have the resistance so we need to find the maximum allowable current so i need to find i what is the maximum i so maximum i means the current that exactly will give us four watts uh, energy dissipated by the resistor so since uh, since i don't have the uh, so since I, I could use this one v is equal i times r but the problem is that i don't have the v so and again uh, I could not use this one here because I don't have the voltage. So this is the suitable formula here to use, which is this one here. Okay, now how to go from here to there? What should I do? Okay, first we need to divide both sides by, since I need I in one side by itself, so divided by R, both sides. So the R will cancel out and I will have I squared equal to P over R. Now, since I need I, so I have some, and, and I is I squared. So to get I, I have to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of the I squared is I and we have P over R. Okay, so this is how to find this formula. Now, after that, we just plug for the power. We have power is four and we have the resistance. Now, this is 10 to the power three. So again, if you use, so, so if, if you don't use the 10 to the power three, that one will be, So again, just pay attention to the units. So we convert the kilo ohm into ohms by multiplying it into the minus to the power three. Now again, if you keep if you keep six k or six without the ten to the power three, then the answer will be in milliamps. If you just use uh, ten uh, multiply by ten to the power three, the answer will be in amps, and then you can convert it back to milliamps. So it will be no problem. Okay, so now we need to go to the practice problem, how to uh, solve the practice problem. Now again, uh, we have to go back to Ohm's law, power law, I V, first one, second one, I square R, third one, V square over R. Okay, now read the problem. So what's that here? It's a current. So it's an I equal to 10 milliamps. You know, milliamps is 10 to the minus 3. Pay attention to that. Flow through a 40 ohm resistor. So R will be given as 4 ohm. 
find the power absorbed by the resistor, okay? So, as I can see, this is the best choice here, or the easiest choice, or the fastest choice. So, P is equal to I squared times R. Why? Because I is given and R is given. So, now we need to, so this is 10 and multiply by 10 to the minus 3, U squared, multiply by 4. Okay, so 10 times 10 is 100. And then you multiply, say, so 1 squared, 10 to the minus 3, you add the exponent, so minus 3 plus minus 3 is minus 6 times 4, so this is, will be 400. Multiply by 10 to the minus 6. So this one will be equal to uh, 400 uh, 10 to the minus 6 watts. Now we can converse to this to, to milliwatts as follows. So it's 400. Now 10 to the minus 6 would be 10 to the minus 3 multiply by 10 to the minus 3. Okay, so we convert this one here to M, which is milli, and this 400 divided by, uh, 400 divided by 1000, it will be 0.4 milliwatts. So let me see here. Again, my mistake, I missed a zero here, so there's a zero here. Uh, because it's a 40 instead of, so that one will be uh, 4,000. So this is a 4,000, this is a 4,000. So, so this is will be uh, again divide. So 4,000 times 10 to the minus three, and this is the whole thing here, it's a four. So this is the answer. So it will become a four. Let me uh, rework this problem here to be uh, more, much better here. Okay, so let me plug for uh, I, which is 10, 10 to the minus three square multiplied by 40. So this equals to 100 times, if you square the 10, you get 100 times 40 is 4,000, multiply by 10 to the minus 6. This is the same as if you write down 10, 4,000, multiply by 10 to the minus 3, multiply by 10 to the minus 3. So that one, we can convert it to M, and 4,000 divided by 1,000, so this 3, 0 will cancel with because 10 to the minus 3, it means uh, 4,000 divided by 1,000, same thing. So this is the same as, you know, 4,000 over 1,000, which is 10 to the minus 3, milli. So this will become 4 milli watts. Okay, so power requires an instrument to measure. The name of the instrument that we use to measure the power is what is what meter and what our meter. Now, as you notice here, the word watt meter is consists of two sections, watt and meter. So where's the watt is? What's the watt is? Is the units. So it's easy to remember the, the instrument that we use to measure the uh, power, since we know the units of the power is watt, so that means watt meter. Okay, so watt meter is the watt hour means how much power being consumed per hour. So power in a liquid circuit equal to the product of the voltage and the current. So this is a power. But in order to measure the, 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 the power, we need a device called a watt meter, is a meter that measures the instantaneous power. Now, instantaneous power is the power that changes with time. 
So, you know, every time there is a different value as the current increases, when you, uh, when you switch on the appliances in your home or the lights in your home or the uh, microwave. So every time you switch a new device, you turn it on, more power will be consumed more power will be measured. So that's why power is almost changes with time. So what, what our meter measures the amount of power used in a given time. So for example, if I have a device uh, such as a microwave, it's consuming 60 watt as a power. So if I keep this uh, device turned on for one hour, my watt meter that the utility company, that the electric company installed in my house is going to measure 60, okay, 60 watt. Now, if I keep the microwave turned on for another, for a second hour, now the watt hour meter is going to measure 60 plus 60 is 120. If I keep it for three hours, it will be 180 and so on. So this is the meaning of using the watt hour meter. It's going to accumulate or increase the number of the watts are consumed uh, uh, per hour here. Okay, so this is, will be the end of the uh, tape, the end of the video tape for, uh, for this part. And next time we will talk about the resistors power rating. Thank you for your listening and goodbye.